Uh, Kerry Katona has been through it all. Uh, she went into foster care as a small child after her mother attempted suicide. She lived with four different families. She went to eight different schools. Despite that difficult start, success was almost instant. An 18-year-old pop sensation with atomic kitten. Now, we know that ever since her life has been lived in the glare of the press and has included spells in rehab for drug addiction, a period at the Priory to treat her bipolar. She was even held hostage and suffered multiple bankruptcies. Always those seeking, in her words, to get that stable family environment she never had. Kerry's been married three times. And it's quite well known that her most recent marriage to the late George Kay was ma marred by violence, and she ultimately had to take out a restraining order on him. Today sees her newest book, Kerry Katona, Whole Again, it's out this week, uh, coinciding with National Domestic Violence Awareness Week. <gasps> Kerry Katona, fresh from a bowl of pasta. What were you eating, love? What was in the pasta bowl? Well, my son loves cooking, so he made me spag bowl, and it was lovely. Great. I'm glad. But I'm everything glad... you just said there, Jezza, honest God, S Steven Spielberg come right all that. Could he? You won't believe it. <laughs> no. Listen, so good, and I mean this, to have you on. Um, so much I want to talk to you about. A um, lot of thought went into the title of the book then. <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah. It's like Jeremy Carl Live. We spent ages trying to work out that. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the start I bet you of your took, took your ages to come up with that. Yeah, it did, mate. Uh, let's talk about the start of your life before we come full <laughs> circle. Um, yeah. A hard upbringing. Describe it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a product of an affair. I was brought up as an only child by my mum. My mum was diagnosed as manic depression, which is bipolar. She's a self, she was a self-harmer. My first memory is being three, watching my mum self-harm. Uh, she did that up until I was 17. Um, we was in refuges for battered wives and kids. My mum was with a woman for many years in the 80s, so I got beat up because of that. Um, and then I got put in foster home when I was 13. My mum fell and stabbed her. Uh, Tony was Freddy Krueger and I pulled the knife out and she went back to him. And then I had my first drug when I was 14. My mum told me it was sherbet and it was speed uh, while I was with my foster parents. I uh, got put into a semi independence home when I was 16. I had a great set of boobies on me. I knew I wasn't going to be a rocket scientist. So I thought, you know what, I'll use what God gave me. Um, so I became a page three glamour model. And at eight, 17, I was an atomic kitten and me, me life changed over right. like Let, that. Let's, I mean, I've skipped over loads let's, of stuff, but that, that's the gist stop. of it. Right, listen, <laughs> listen, let's stop at atomic kitten. Um, when you look yeah. back at that, that life, right, people would say, good God, you talk about it almost flippantly. You talk about it like it's every day. It was a hard upbringing. Do you think the well-documented troubles that you've gone through that we'll talk about, we've got loads of time tonight, do you blame your childhood on that upbringing, Kerry? Don't blame anybody for anything, Jeremy. I have no regrets. I can't live blaming other people. It would be a very bitter world. At one point, I was living a very pity party for Kerry. Oh, it's my mum's fault for my childhood. It's my accountant's fault for stealing my money. It's Brian for leaving me. It's Mark for the drugs. If it wasn't for my childhood, I don't think I would have the resilience to get through what I've been through in my adult years. Despite the fact I brought a lot of it on myself, I was almost addicted to drama, so to speak. You've got to own it. And there's nothing I can do about the past, Jeremy. I can't do anything about my childhood. It's, it's happened, and I do speak about it very flippantly because I just didn't know any different. I, I didn't know any different. I thought that was a norm, you know. So bringing that into my adult life, it's given me a lot of strength and also taught me what not to do. You know, I'm a wonderful mum. I'll never let anyone take that away from me. And there's been no mistakes, only lessons, and you, you've just got to learn from it. And you that's what I have to be. I've got nothing but love for my mum and love for Brian and love for Mark Croft and love for... I, I've got... You know, these things have happened and a lot of it I've got to take responsibility for. I was given choices and I made the wrong choices, but I was in the wrong situations with the wrong people. What was the but worst you've got decision? Own it. What, you've got right, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the worst choice? What's the, what's the worst mistake Kerry Katona made in her life? None. 
I don't no because I won't be who I am today. The other things you look back and think, oh god, I wish I had done that. But if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have had say Mark Croft. I should never have married Mark Croft. It should have been a one night stand. But if I didn't marry Mark Croft, I wouldn't have had my son Max and Heidi. So in the, at the back of my book, I put a dedication to all my husbands. It's a very long page. <laughs> so saying thank you because <laughs> and it's actually like the last bit of the book. Um, I've got to just be grateful because I'm so lucky to be where I am. I'm blessed, I'm alive, I'm grateful. You know, at one point I was like, I was doing cocaine because it was my only friend. I don't, I was never addicted to it, but it was, it was the only thing that was there for me because I was feeling sorry for me. Oh, I deserve this line of coke. I deserve that because no one loves me. They're selling stories. I had to pick myself up and move myself away and give myself a good talking to. It was hard. In terms really of hard, the book, but I out, can't live with regret. In terms of the book out this week, yeah. um, whole again. Before that was published, your kids, five of them, yeah, hold it up. That's great. Were they yeah. aware of this? Do you want him? <laughs> I mean, were they aware of the drugs? Were they aware of the body transformation? Yeah, surgery? everything. Have you I, always been really open about it? Everything, everything. Really open and honest. I did a TV show called Caricatona Coming Clean. And Molly and Lily was about eight and nine. And in this documentary is the News of the World video of me starting cocaine. And before it went out on the TV, now bear in mind, my children have never witnessed me doing drugs or anything like that. You know, um, the public knew more about it than what my own children did. I sat them down and I said, I want to put this show on for you now. And you've got to see things about your mummy that you, you didn't even know or realise. And... Um, it was heartbreaking. I've been very open and honest with my kids. They know everything. With my body, I've been sliced and diced that much, Jeremy. I'm like a flat pack from Ikea. I come with instructions now to put me back together again. But again, <laughs> but again, Kerry, Kerry, breathe, and I breathe, know I... breathe one minute. Again, mm. flippant. Why so many body <laughs> transformations? Why? You know, people go, they go, oh, I don't like myself. What is that? To look bigger and better and younger to make... What, is it a shield? Is it a, is no, it a facade? No. What is it? No, no, not at all. I think being in the industry has probably messed me up big time. Bear in mind when I was um, 18, 19 on the cover of magazines in the circle of shame, they used to call it, Jeremy, and they'd focus in on your cellulite and you have to look a certain way. Yeah. And it's affected me massively over the years. And bear in mind, I get a lot of it for free and I just can't say no. Do you hate <laughs> fame or do you love fame? What's it done to you? I think I became famous because I was so desperate to be loved. When I won the jungle, I felt so loved and so wanted. And I think because of my childhood and being an only child and being on my own and feeling rejected from my mum and not knowing my biological dad, I think I thought if I become somebody, um, my mum will love me for me and my real dad will come and find me. I'll be like a Daddy Warbox moment, like in Annie. I was desperate to be loved, Jeremy. I, I wanted to please everybody. I think that's what a lot of people in this industry uh, kind of do. They, they want to be liked. We all want to be loved. I do. Stay there. So much more to come. More with Kerry Katona. Uh, we'll ask her uh, about so much more. That's all coming back. We're coming in three. Don't go anywhere. I'm right back. Welcome back to Jeremy Carr Live. If you want to be in touch on all the socials, at Jeremy Carr Live, this is the final chance crew. What's the hashtag? Jeremy Carr Live! Ridiculous. Still with me, Kerry Katona. Kerry, thank you very much for joining us. New book, Whole Again, out today. Uh, let's talk only fans. Um, uh, several very quick questions, so quick answers. Did you do, do it because you were... <laughs> Did you do it because you were bankrupt? And Because we read that you were bankrupt, now we read you're a millionaire. What does it involve? I've not been bankrupt for nearly eight years now, Jeremy. I think once something bad happens to you, it sticks to you. It's like mud, isn't it? Um, I've been out of bankruptcy for eight years. Um, uh, but like everybody during the pandemic, I was struggling. And again, I started off as a glamour model. And don't bear in mind, I used to do like FHM, Nuts, Zoo Magazine. They're all gone now. So instead, we've got OnlyFans, which I take complete control of. And yeah, it's made me a millionaire. 
Um, in terms of what you do... Um, Thank you, boobies. All right. Yeah, well, I could, yeah. Um, is it very... In I don't, don't, know. don't pretend you've not been on there, Jeremy. I wouldn't even know, right? <laughs> I get excited as the pattern on the kitchen roll, woman. I don't know how to do anything technical. So what, do, what uh, does Kerry... You're after mates' rates, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> I am literally... I am literally not after mates' rates, although apparently somebody's just said in my ear, why didn't you slide into her DMs? And I said, like, what the hell does that mean, a shoe? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I'll tell you one thing, right? Right? I'll tell you one thing. Um, how would you describe yourself? You have to yeah. fill out a form now. We've got we've had pop star, you know, we've got the a kit, Tomica Kitna are getting together again. We've got author, we've got actress, we've got OnlyFans, which I've never seen. What would be a job description written down by you on a piece of paper? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Mm. Um, you're with Ryan now. I you're have very... several businesses. I'm a CEO of. Uh, yeah. Fine. Uh, just, yep, yeah, that's good. Uh, Ryan, you're with Ryan now. You're very happy. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, freezing your eggs. Well, I've got scrambled, boiled, fried. Which one do you after? <laughs> do you want more kids? <laughs> yeah, well, my other half, Ryan. <laughs> Um, I never want to carry another child again because I I nearly died and DJ actually did die when she was born. I think that's my body saying enough's enough. But me and Ryan, we've been together nearly five years now. Ryan hasn't got any of his own biological children, but me and the kids are more than enough. He's happy with that. But we've both spoke about it and I think we both want to, you know, do embryo freezing just to be on the safe side in, in future if we want to have babies. But I will do it via surrogacy. Final um, question, Scott on Twitter. Brian uh, that. Kerry, final question, Scott on Twitter. Would you, would you do another reunion and tour with Atomic Kitten? Yes or no? Absolutely, definitely. I love the girls a bits. What will you not do for money? Everything's for sale, Jeremy. What a great way to end the interview. Um, so that only fans. What, what do I? <laughs> what do I do? Uh, no, I'm, I'm only joking. Um, listen. <laughs> We've known each other a long time. I really, I really respect you yeah. for being open and honest. A lot of people will say, oh, you know, she does this. But what you're saying is, yeah, I've been through troubles. I'm up front about it. I've made mistakes. I'm very open with my kids. All I'm trying to do is make a living. I am what I am. What you see is what you get. Because there's a lot of falseness, isn't there? Yeah. I am who I am. I've got nothing to hide. No one's got nothing on me. I'm living my best life for me. Other people's opinions do not define me as a person. It's not my business what other people think of me. All that matters is my kids love me and we're happy as a family. Do you think very quickly, after all you've been through, that criticism now is like water off a duck's back? Yeah. It used to really bother me, but it's... It doesn't bother me anymore. I think you get to a certain age as well, don't you, that it's... Sometimes it can still a bit niggle. You know what hurts me is the... Sometimes what kids might say to my kids, yeah. that gets to me, but not what you say about me. Listen, good luck with the book. Hole again. Send me a copy, all right? And um, I won't be watching OnlyFans. I don't know what that means. Uh, and give my love to the family, the girls, Ryan, as well. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Kerry, <laughs> look at her face. She definitely thinks... God bless, I wouldn't honestly know what to do.